Nothing can compare to the joys of having a pet. Pet owners know that it isn't just an animal in the house, it's an addition to the family. With so much love, happiness, and memories a pet may give, it is sometimes impossible to say no to adoption. But how much do those owners know about the shelter they have purchased from? The Animal Care League has been around since 1973, but there is more to the history than just a date. We started in 1973. There was an ad put in the Oak Leaves by a man who rode, drove a bus, Bob West. He lived in Westchester, and he felt it was unbelievable that we had this awful little dog pound in Oak Park, which was at the side of the viaduct. It was cold. The rain came in, the snow came in, and the children would actually break in and release the animals. It was so awful. And he put a notice in the oak leaves, and uh, quite a few of us showed up for a meeting at the Oak Park Library, and I was one of them. And from then on, we did become the Village Humane Society. That was our first original. As an animal shelter is dedicated to its animals, the types of pets must vary to attract customers. Some potential pet owners may wonder where the animals in the shelter come from before they purchase a pet. Generally cats and dogs. The majority of them are the cats and dogs. We have anywhere from 100 to 125 cats at any given time, um, 15 to 25 dogs. Uh, but we've had bunnies. We have one bunny right now. We've had mice, rats, chickens, snakes. So um, we've had almost everything you can think of that would be in somebody's house that's domestic. We get them from several different sources. Sometimes they come from families who can no longer care for them um, through financial reasons or they, the animal may have been more than they bargained for. Uh, their living situation may have changed um, with the economy. Many people are having to move into apartments now and the apartments don't take, keep, accept animals. Uh, we get them straight from the streets. Um, they're picked up by citizens or by animal control departments. Uh, right off run strays and they're brought to us. But will the shelter always have enough animals to give away? Uh, unfortunately, there are more than enough and there's too many. Uh, there's, not enough, we're, there's not enough space in this building for us to ever care for as many as the phone calls that we receive every day. Uh, there's animals, they get countless calls every day of animals that are need to be placed, need homes that are stray, that are ones that they want to give up, um, and there's just not enough space. The shelter has even been through devastating damages from a fire in the past. It was probably about 11 years ago, 11, 12 years ago, shortly after we had moved in. It was devastating. It was um, pretty scary to get a phone call saying there had been a fire in the shelter, and then to see it on the news. All of such improvements to the shelter would have came with a cost. The shelter reaches out to the community when they are in need of profit. Funding's uh, the, the fun and challenging part. We are not-for-profit, which means that um, we don't get government money, we don't get tax money. Um, we have to raise all the money ourselves. So we hold fundraisers, uh, we get straight donations, uh, we do have an adoption fee, and so for our services there's, there's a fee for our services. Um, we sell merchandise. Uh, we have a little store here. We have a second chance shop, which is just a, a resale shop, so donated items, household goods. We sell through, uh, through the resale shop, and um, that money all comes to us. Grants, bequests, um, a whole myriad of different, uh, different avenues that, uh, that we have to use to, to fund this place. The resale shop has contributed to the income supply of the shelter in a great way. It continues to do so today by having a resale shop that that would hopefully give us some kind of steady stream of income. And you know, I, I believe that it, it has done that. The shelter still is expanding today and has great plans for the future. Shelter still growing. We just expanded recently. Um, we have had Lan in the back. We opened up our low cost spay neuter clinic. Um, We've expanded our facilities. We're hoping in the future to have a green roof where we can have the animals, um, you know, the dogs run and play on the roof instead. Because um, we're kind of running out of space already. Yeah. And we've only been here, you know, maybe 11 years or so. 
and we've just done, you know, bought a, a the building next door, expanded on that, expanded a second time. So we're always growing. One of the new add-ons to the shelter is the spay and neuter facility, open to assist the pet owners in need. It started as a vision from uh, the president of our organization, I think, and, um, and a vision of all, all of ours and the fact that in order to cut down on the number of unwanted animals um, in this area, we need to really focus on spaying, spaying and neuter them uh, so that we won't have the cages full like we have right now. Naturally with a pet comes memories and great stories to share. A really good one was we had um, in our dog kennels, they're open at the top in the, in the runs, and we had two dogs that one of the employees had been walking another dog, and these two dogs started following her, and they ran across North Avenue, and so she got a hold of them and brought them into the shelter, and so we took them in, and they were big dogs, a Rottweiler and a Shepherd, and the, um, the, every morning we would find the German Shepherd had somehow climbed over the fence to get into the cage, and she was in the cage with her friend, the Rottweiler. And so we had to finally put a, a lid on that, on that run, but every morning she would, she would climb that fence to get in with her, with her friend. Looking to the Animal Care League, it can be seen how much the staff and volunteers love taking care of these adoptable animals, so that one day that pet can begin a new life with an owner that they can trust and rely on. I guess the other thing I'd add is that you know we also one of our programs that we're trying to build on we've been doing it for a couple of years now we're building on our off-site adoption program where we're taking our animals out into the communities um, you know the shelter itself is located here in Oak Park but uh, we realize that sometimes it's tough for people to get over here and they don't know we exist and they don't know where we're at or it's tough with the kids to get them to corral them all into one place so we take our animals to um, different stores, Pet Smarts, Petco's, to the Street Fest during the summertime, car shows. Um, we're out in Brookfield, Riverside area quite a bit. So um, we hope people look for us out in the community to, to see where we're at and look for our animals. And if they're looking for it to adopt, hopefully they'll come to us. The journey has been long and difficult for the Animal Care League, but there will never be a shortage of hope. The staff and volunteers are constantly hard at work to make the shelter a better place for the animals.